Welcome to the Scoop School Podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host, Hokey Pokey, is more than just a dance to him. The ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day ice cream lovers, my name's Steve Christensen, welcome, nice to have you here at the Scoop School Show. Uh, I want to thank our episode sponsor, which is Weber Flavors. Uh, I'm telling you what, Weber Flavors do a great job. They do a great job of extracts. They specialize in extracts. Big punch of color, bang in the face, big punch of flavor, bang in the face, with not a lot of fluff. There's not a lot of liquid in there, not a lot of water, not a lot of bulking agent. If you want short, sharp, good burst of flavor in your ice creams, frozen desserts, WeberFlavors.com. Thank you for your episode sponsorship. Now, I want to talk in this particular episode of the podcast, episode of the show, about collars versus lids. So, a lot of stores, <clears throat> particularly if you're selling a soft ice cream, so if you're selling a frozen yogurt or a soft serve or a frozen custard product, a lot of the stores are using what we call a blended product. So, they'll take a 16 ounce cup, they'll put uh, 12 ounces of soft product in here, again, custard, uh, frozen yogurt, soft serve, and they'll actually drop the condiment, the candy, the particulate in the other side, and they'll blend it. Now, most of the blenders come with some sort of shield or a splash guard, but a lot of stores take the splash guard off just because it gets pretty cumbersome, and they use one of two things. This is the collar. So this is a stainless steel collar, Uh, You can buy them from most restaurant supply stores. They do come in different sizes. So you'll want to make sure that for the 16 ounce cup, you've got the collar that fits into there. Now there's some advantages for using one of these stainless steel collars. I should say that they also come in plastic as well. A little bit cheaper, do the same kind of thing. So the nice thing about putting a collar in here when I'm blending either a shake or a blended product like a McFlurry or a McBlizzard uh, or a concrete as they call them in the custard world, is that with the collar on there, you can do one of two things. First of which is that it's gonna stop the spatter of the blade spinning around and flicking the soft ice cream out into the workplace. That's number one. But secondly, having a collar that comes over the lip of the cup means that I can actually fill my ice cream up and above the level of the cup. So at the end of blending, I can lift this up and you'll find that a lot of stores will have a domed ice cream product that's kind of come up over the top of the cup. Looks pretty good visually. Um, And uh, that's why they use the collar. Now, for me, the downside of using a collar like this is the cost, the capital outlay. So this collar can be anywhere between $18 to $25, uh, the stainless steel ones that are. And most stores that are medium to high volume are gonna need anywhere between 20 and 30 of these because shakes and blended products create a a pretty big percentage of sales. They're very, very popular. And so by the time I've invested, let's say $20 in this and 20 of its friends, brothers and sisters, I put this for a shake or a blended product. I put it in the rinse water. It goes over to the wash sink sanitizer, comes back into my container and rotate it around again. There's a bit of logistics that go along with that. So one time cost, a little bit of uh, ongoing uh, cleaning, labor and time. Uh, but a lot of places use a collar like that. What we've always done is we've used a dome lid. So this particular lid has an opening in it that's much wider than your standard dome lid. So I put this instead onto my 16 ounce cup and what I end up doing is I've got my soft ice cream on this side, my condiments on this side. This opening in the dome is big enough for me to put the blender head through. So I'm putting this up into the blender and I'm churning it inside the cup, the lid stays on. So when I'm finished churning, I basically release this cup from the blender uh, and I hand it straight over with a spoon and a straw on the top and I've got something that stays on the cup. So it's an, uh, the, the downside of this, I guess, is that you've got this ongoing cost. It becomes part of your food cost where, and this, this uh, dome lid can be anywhere between eight and 15 cents. So whether you're using a collar like this, which is one capital outlay, but a lot of washing, or you've got a dome lid that actually is much less per unit, but you don't get to recycle it, it goes out every single time. And again, it's something that you would need to factor in with your food cost 
regardless of whether you use the one or the other, I guess it doesn't really matter, but you've got to figure out what works best for your stores. In medium to high volume stores, I think this makes a little bit more sense, just because you don't have the need to be able to wash, rinse, sanitize, and keep that circular, uh, circuitous rotation of clean and dirty collars going. Anyway, I'm interested to hear what you do in your store, whether you use a dome lid, whether you use a collar, Talk to me about the pros and cons and why you chose what you chose. Um, I'm gonna have the uh, code for this particular dome lid in the uh, show notes below, so you can kind of order it online if you would like, give it a whirl. Again, thank you very much for Web of Flavors for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. And hey, if you have any questions about the ice cream industry, you wanna get in, you wanna grow your business, scoopschool.com is the place to go. We've got some great online uh, video-based training as well as some consultative programs there. Have a look, scoopschool.com. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you in the next episode.